power of hard work, Naman sir has held significant roles from representing Bangalore University to addressing international conferences. A fervent nationalist, he advocates for the youth's role in building a stronger India and a united world through simulations, policy making and dialogue. Now we request Naman sir to take the stage to inspire us with his journey. Good morning to one and all present here. At the outset, I'd like to thank the respected dignitaries, various directors of the sister branches of Excellentia, faculty members, delegates, faculty coordinators of various participating schools. It's truly an honor to stand before you and deliver the address on behalf of the Indian Conclave and more so as a member of the Excellentia Fraternity with respect to the Model United Nations. And I shall be failing in my duties if I fail to acknowledge the distinguished presence of all the executive board members who have travelled from various parts of the country. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here and making this conference happen. So in light of the agenda that we are discussing today, the general theme of the conference, Ecosystem Restoration, Dear delegates, it is expedient as well as necessary to understand that Mother Nature has given us enough to satisfy a man's need but not man's greed. We are a civilization, even before we became a state, we became a rashtra, we became a society as the Indic civilization. If you go back to the roots of our history, ladies and gentlemen, we will understand that this is the only nation in whose scriptures we worship Mother Nature. You go back to the ancient Indic text, you will see that our ancestors with great amount of pride, pomp and pageantry chanted the shloka, Agni Mandalam, Vayu Mandalam, Bhumi Mandalam, Bhavatu, Bhavatu, Bhavatu. What does it mean? I worship the most sacred amongst the Bhutas, that is the fire. I say worship the life-giving elixir on this planet, that is the water. And most importantly, I worship the soil that hosts me. Today, when we are sitting here, we are simulating various committees through various resolutions. We are coming up with a legal mechanism, with a customary mechanism, with a principle as to how we can build our coordination with this ecosystem and how we can further restore it. While the message is very simple, while the laws and statutes are very perennial in nature, going back to our ancient Indic practices, going back to our cultural practices, going back to our the practices which was once preached by our great ancestors, the answer lies there, ladies and gentlemen, answer lies there, delegates. Again, going back to our history, you take the example of the great Indian epic, the great Purana Ramayana. Amidst all the messages that Ramayana gave us, what is the core philosophy? Ramayana is the standing testimony as to how human beings coexisted with animals. Today, how many of you all use GPS? How many of you all use Google Maps? Everyone in the room, if you are not raising, either you are not paying attention or you are not attentive or you are lying. That gives me a good number. But back in the day, who was Sri Ramachandra's Google map? Jatayu, an injured vulture who was lying on the dying bed. When you say that Rama went all the way to Sri Lanka with his Vanara Sena, who helped him build that magnificent structure which exists to even this day, the Britishers call it as the Adams Bridge. It was the elephants, the apes, the bears, the animals, the squirrel. Everyone in, from the flora and fauna community worked in unison in building this Rama Setu. So again, we coexisted with Mother Nature. Then this is the message that our epic, our history Ramayana tells us. Sri Ramachandra's army was a Vanarasena. On one side you had Dashakanta, Dashagrivar, Ravanasura, the world's most dreaded demon. 
Rama was a king of Ayodhya. He could have summoned his army from Ayodhya at his beck and call. He had the entire Dashratha's army who could have come and fought for him. But he went with the Vanara Sena. He went with the army of apes and monkeys to wage the war. Again, this gives us a message that human beings, when work, when they work closely with Mother Nature, the victory is yours. Dharma Rakshati Rakshitaha. Protect your dharma, dharma protects you. Prakruto Prakruti Rakshito Rakshitaha. Protect Mother Nature. Vriksho Vrikshati Rakshitaha. Protect Mother Nature. Protect your trees. The trees will protect you. The environment will protect you. Mother Nature will protect you. Now the need as to why I come here today and what is the larger message that I want to give you. And we were discussing this in... I was discussing this with the dignitaries this morning when we were sitting for breakfast. We are all Gen Z's, yes or no? How many of you all know that the United Nations organization has classified all of us as Generation Z? That is Gen Z. Anyone who is born after 1995 until today, we are all called as Generation Z. Now, as Gen Z's, we have a very big responsibility ahead of us. The next 25 years, I am no scholar or an expert in speaking about international diaspora. Moli Sharma, ma'am, is here. I would leave it to her to speak about the principles of the United Nations and what is our standing in the global diaspora. My role is simply limited and restricted to India. And considering the fact that the majority of the audience here today, I think in unanimity, are the future citizens of this proud nation, this proud civilization, Bharat. The next 25 years is a very crucial year. Today, when you just open the newspaper, today, when you just see the cultural glory of this country, today, when you see that where do we stand as a nation in the global diaspora, from science to sports, from agriculture to sericulture, from startup to science in digital infrastructure, digital technology. I understand that most of you all in the audience are also preparing for your JE to get into bits, IIT, etc, etc. So today as a nation, I can proudly say that we are the world leaders when it comes to technology. From science to sports to sericulture to agriculture, from startup to digital infrastructure, we are we are living in the era of a golden era, I can simply conclude that the hallmark set by India today is going to be very crucial in the next 25 years. And as the youth of Bharat, as the youth of India, and as the future citizens of not just India alone, but as future global citizens, what is the expectation out of us? Is that simulations of this regard, the more you participate in policy making, the more you participate in MU, and the more you participate in your hackathons, moot court, because I come from a legal background, the more you do these kind of simulations, it kind of, just like how an egg hatches out and a beautiful bird comes out, it hatches an energy that you would have a strength and makes you discover your unknown potentials. Considering the fact that most of my speech was based on Ramayana, how many of you all know that after a period of time, Hanuman had forgotten how to fly? because of a small curse that the Rushi Muni had given him. It was Jambavanta, another wise counsel from the Vanara Sena who reminds him that Hanuma, if there is one person who is the strong, so if there is one person who can go to Lanka in one single flight, it is you. The rest was history. He goes to Lanka at a single flight, he meets Mother Sita, rest is history. And Model United Nations Conference is such a platform for you. I don't know how many of you are the public speakers. I do not know how many of you are inbuilt leaders. I don't know if you people here sitting here are even class monitors. But what does this MUN teach you? MUN will discover the undiscovered. It shall prepare you as the new person that, as I was telling you before, flabbergasts you all by yourself. And as I was telling you, as my children, your children, your grandchildren will again live in such an era. An era where we are seeing tremendous transition. An era where we are seeing that a nation which was once called as the nation of snake charmers are today leading over G20, presiding over G20. Today we are appealing to the world that war is not a solution, but the solution lies in diplomacy. Today we can, we can criticize Hamas in the same breath we can criticize Palestine. We can support Israel in the same breath the way we support Palestine. 
this is the generation i do not know in the future if we will if we will ever have such an opportunity the united states of america which was the world war heroes the united kingdom which ruled the world for 3 centuries today they are behind india when it comes to gdp as far as uk is concerned usa have a crippling inflation rate their gdps are collapsing unemployment rate is at its peak but today we do not have such an economic instability two times america saw economic recession in india not even one touch would have we declared the financial emergency so this is the opportunity that bharat is giving you and we as the future citizens the next 25 years is in our hands it is in our control so what is that we need to do how are we going to become great leaders how do we make ourselves as a standing example how do we fight the menace of brain drain where talented people from india are going abroad create opportunities over here generate more employment over here fight the inequalities that exist take sustainable development goals more seriously take the philosophy of the indian constitution more seriously follow the path that was once treaded by your ancestors because remind you that this was the nation where travelers from across the world came seeking for knowledge so what we need to do as a fundamental resolve is reinstate parama vaibhava bharata that is reignite the lost glory of this great civilization the bharatiya civilization and hence let us seize this opportunity and with this i want to conclude let us seize this opportunity to make bharat the leading or the guiding light of the world let us work together in one voice and unanimously in making bharat the vishwaguru and the only way possible is not through possession of weapons of mass destruction you need it for self defense yes but the only mantra to make bharat the vishwaguru to make bharat the guiding light of the world is through knowledge and from the words of swami vivekananda knowledge is like a tiger's milk knowledge is like a tiger's milk one who drinks it has to roar thank you very much jai hind jai talangana